Today, we're gonna review the Hemiway Rambler. Now, I won't spend too much time rambling about this bike before we take it out for a full review, but this bike does come in three trim levels. Both the basic and the upgraded have a 500 watt hub motor, and the premium version has a 500 watt mid-drive motor. Today, we'll be on the 500 watt hub drive motor. This is the beautiful mint green color, but there are two other colors available. And as you can tell by looking at this bike, it is a commuter style bike. It's got suspension on the front. You can either lock it out or open it up. It's got a headlight. It's got the new display, which we'll turn on in a moment. Thumb throttle is on the left. Ergonomic style hand grips. Swept back handlebars for a comfortable upright seating position. The total weight capacity of this bike is 330 pounds with a recommended rider height of five foot two to six foot four. I'm six foot five, so we'll see how I fit on this bike. And we'll also throw a five foot seven rider on this bike to show you what that looks like too. The official website for this bike says you can get up to 55 miles of range using the removable 48 volt 15 amp hour battery pack. The battery is removable so you can bring it in your office or home to charge it or you can leave it tucked away in the frame and you can charge it through this port here. You get a three amp smart charger with this bike which is better than the typical two amp chargers we see on some of these bikes. There are five levels of pedal assist on the built-in cadence sensor on this bike. The bike weighs 61 pounds and you get 180 millimeter rotors paired up to mechanical disc brakes to bring all that weight to a stop. The levers are just fine and you get a wide saddle and the bike is very easy to get on and off with its step through frame. Now, depending on the trim level you get, there will be possibly different gear ratios. This bike comes with a seven speed Shimano shifter with an Altus derailleur. Gear shifting happens right here on the right with a shifter down here and up here. Get a bell on the right and your controls are right here. So let's turn the bike on. Get the Hemiway logo, fires right up. And while you may see some flickering on the GoPro recording this, the actual screen does not flicker to my eyes at all. We're on a full charge. Pedal assist modes are operated right here. Get zero through five. Shows you your average speed, max speed, your current trip in terms of minutes, the odometer, and your trip. Depending on the trim level you choose, you may get fenders or you may get a rack. And as I mentioned, the motor differences. The mid-drive motor that is not offered on the trim that you're seeing in today's video will have more torque and hill climbing ability in comparison to the 500 watt hub motor that comes on the basic package. The tires are 2.4 inches wide with a very street friendly tread pattern. And listed on the website is an integrated tail light, which is not on this bike. This is a very early production model. So if you order one, you'll probably be getting that integrated tail light. So I think it's about time I stop rambling about the Rambler and let's get this thing out for a ride. So hopping on the Rambler, the first thing I'm noticing, throttle does not work under pedal assist zero. As soon as you put it on one, you get access to the power. So we're gonna head on over and do the 20% hill grade test just to see how this bike performs before we get out and test out the pedal assist modes and all the other stuff. And of course, we'll go ahead and start the Strava to see what kind of distance we get out of the battery today, tracking our distance with GPS. So we're gonna kick this review off with the 20% hill test grade. But before we do that, this bike does have an automatic light sensing headlight. When you're in the dark, it'll automatically turn on and off based on light. It's a feature that you can disable in the menu. So hopping on this bike, we are in a full charge, pedal assist five. We're gonna do thumb throttle only. I weigh 200 pounds. This is a 20% grade just to demonstrate the torque hill climbing ability of this bike. This is a very steep hill and the power of this bike does ramp on like slowly. We can see the power meter right here. So let's get a bit of a rollout. The way these works is the power ramps on slowly. So we'll, we'll let it ramp on here and get a bit of a rollout. And it doesn't want to do the 20% grade under throttle only quite. So if you need a really steep hill climbing bike, you might want to look at the mid drive upgrade of this bike. It does cost a bit more. So let's go ahead and try giving it a little bit of pedaling now and see how it'll do while pedaling. We are in gear one. I'm giving it a pretty good amount of effort, but we are able to get up the hill. So let's try this one more time, getting a little more of a head start, let the power really ramp on this bike. And we're making it up the 20% grade now. So we'll talk about the cadence sensor and the power delivery here in just a moment. But first, I just want to talk about the thumb throttle. So even on pedal assist five, we can see this little bar down here and it shows the power output of the bike. And I'm flooring it right now. And you can see that it like eases on that power. So in general, this bike is going to like not give you all the power like right away. Front suspension comes in handy for stuff like that. So there's kind of like two implications of this. One, you're going to get a lot better range out of the bike by it not giving you all the power right away away. Another thing about that power delivery is it's going to be a lot more gentle and smooth. Some of the older model Hemiway bikes I've reviewed, they were uh, pretty abrupt and jarring on the power delivery. So these new models, we can see 
they're a little bit less barbaric in their power delivery. And this is a commuter bike. So if you're looking for something that's gonna be like thrilling, this isn't probably gonna be the option you're looking for. I'll show you the zero to 20 acceleration here in just a few. But first let's look at the pedal assist mode. So pedal assist one, when I start pedaling, there's a cadence sensor on this bike and we can see it's giving me a very low level of power. So if you're really trying to maximize that full range out of the bike, obviously run it on a lower pedal assist. And this will give us two bars of power, bumping it on to gear four. Pedal assist two gives us four bars of power, bringing us up to about 19, still giving two bars of power. And it pretty much just gives us like a consistent four bars of power. Moving on to pedal assist three, we get up to six bars of power. And I am on top gear seven now, and it's bringing us up to about 21, 22. Speedometer on this model, I'm seeing it jump around a little bit. But after you get up to like 23, it'll kind of cut you off. Brakes feel fine. We'll give them a real test here in a little bit. They're mechanical 180 millimeter brakes. They're sufficient for a 60 pound commuter. How's this five? It's cutting us off completely because uh, the max speed of this bike is only like 20, although it's showing 23. Brakes are fine. Let's check and see how that speedometer matches up with the GPS. GPS is showing. Side by side comparison here. Speedometer is pretty close. Merging out into traffic, got that front suspension, helps ease the bumps a little bit, definitely. This will show us almost full power now. Bump it on up one more to pedal assist five. Pedaling at 24 now, it won't give us any help because this is a class two e-bike and it just won't help us beyond 20 miles an hour. Although according to this, it will help us a little bit past 20. Let's get on over and do the zero to 20 acceleration test. So it is an 18 amp controller, 48 volt system. I weigh 200 pounds. We're going to do zero to 20 acceleration. Thumb throttle only, pedal assist five, ready, go. Eases on that power. We can see it displaying two bars, three bars, or it's ramping up slowly. 15 and 20 showing 18 20 so it'll get you up to speed quick enough but again not thrilling 18 times 48 is 864 watts of peak power output in theory on a 500 watt nominal motor so one of the main characteristics i'm noticing about this bike is just how gentle it is with the power delivery you can see the power delivery meter right there when all the bars are lit up that means you're getting full power that means you're draining your battery fast and also you know accelerating fast but as soon as you let off press it again it kind of makes you start over before it really starts delivering that power as i mentioned earlier it's a lot smoother than some of the original Hemiway bikes that I've reviewed in the past. Like the old Hemiway Cruiser, that thing was a monster. It was a blast, but the power delivery was not nearly as smooth and gentle as this bike. Rolling into a little bit more gentle hill here, we are able to keep up with the road cyclists here, not even pedaling. Handles a hill just fine. We get the front suspension, but no rear suspension so the ride's decent even though it's not like a thrilling bike to ride compared to higher power ones we can still hold pretty high speeds without much effort actually no effort gps says 21 this says 23 now it would be possible to move this throttle to the other side if you wanted to but i know one thing that some people don't like about the throttle on the left side is that it's technically your signaling hand for traffic signals so could have a slight interference there welcome to another beautiful day here in west los angeles on the bike path this is really like the perfect kind of bike to have out here for a nice little cruise. Bump this thing down to pedal assist three. So let's talk about the cadence sensor lag, if there is a lag or not. Not pedaling, pedaling, power. Not pedaling, pedaling, power. Uh, pretty minimal lag. It's pretty responsive cadence sensor. So this is a cadence sensor on this bike, meaning it's not gonna give you power input relative to how hard you're pressing on the pedals like a torque sensor would. In general, a torque sensor is a little bit more expensive bike typically, but the torque sensors are a little bit better feedback in terms of putting power down to the pedals and uh, just like a more natural feeling riding experience with this cadence sensor on pedal assist three it just kind of keeps giving me power 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 and it'll just kind of keep taking me up more and more speed all the way to max speed but if i bump it down now let's slow it down pedal assist one giving it pedal pedaling now it kind of just keeps giving me power like a lower level of power but even on pedal assist one like this is pretty much forcing me to go up to 15 miles an hour like if i pull on the brake sensor it does have the cutoff 
sensors. If I'm cruising, it kind of just keeps trickling that power and pretty much the slowest you can go on this bike is around 13 according to this unless you turn it off to zero and then get no power or press power one feel that power kick back on i don't think this could go up that sand i'm not even going to mess with it on these skinnier tires if you're looking for a bike to do some off-roading this probably isn't going to be your best option but it can get out here just a little bit probably a little underpowered for this sort of thing and then just the riding position of it it's more of a city cruiser you know what i mean but i can do a little bit of you know grass and stuff just front suspension but no rear suspension and the seat is wide and squishy which helps let's give this hill a try uh pedal says five full throttle uh it's giving me full power and we're we're making it up the hill. The bike is pulling us up. It is outputting almost full power under full throttle. I weigh 200 pounds. It's bringing us up. Again, does not dominate hills, but it can do mild hills. Battery is showing four out of five bars after eight miles of riding, 7.99, 43 minutes out here. I've been doing mostly thumb throttle because when that thumb throttle is there, it is just too tempting for me to not use it. Check it out, going through here, we'll be able to see the automatic headlight kick on. I can see it on the ground just a little bit. You can see it shine on the wall. You already know what time it is. If you've seen my reviews before, we're gonna take the Hemiway Rambler up the California incline. This is about an 85 foot climb, 7% grade on average. Down here on the lower part, it's a little bit steeper. The bike is pulling us up, pulling us up the loop-de-loop -loop, under throttle only if i give it a little bit of help you know this thing can do hills all right for sure it's giving me full power seeing voltage sag down to three out of five bars right now uh, full throttle for the california incline it's giving us full power and we'll see it's an 18 amp controller 48 volt system it should have plenty of power to pull us up this thing does a seven percent grade just fine coming up on an acoustic bike somebody working hard we're under throttle only hitting about 19 miles an hour on this seven percent grade motor's holding up just fine and for those of you new here we are just down there yeehaw time for a brake test and now what we're gonna do is the brake test from tony see how these mechanical disc brakes perform from tony they're good, good enough. It's not uncommon to see hydraulic disc brakes on a bike of this price and style, but these mechanical disc brakes do work just fine. Hydraulic disc brakes do give you a little bit more braking force with less, less effort pulling on the, the handles, the levers, but at least on mechanical disc brakes, you'll never have to worry about uh, bleeding the lines mechanical disc brakes you'll have a little bit more regular maintenance but the maintenance is easier for the average person to do uh, a little bit harsh on the boardwalk if you want a bike for riding here you probably want full suspension so i'm gonna head on home and tell you my final range here in just a moment so this is a commuter friendly bike it's not exhilarating but it has decent range decent power it can bring us up some decent hills it's easy to get on all around a decent bike if you do like this bike and the price and you decided this is the bike for you you can purchase through the link below this video in the description box and if you do buy through that link it would help support my reviews at tail happy tv all right guys just making it back into the neighborhood 18 miles on the odometer here two bars remaining on the display pretty much what i would expect from a 14 amp hour 48 volt battery i was pretty much doing thumb throttle all day maxing it out close to 20 miles an hour if you're doing that and you weigh 200 pounds you're not going to get 55 miles of range but if you do give it some pedal assistance you certainly could riding the way i do i'd realistically probably get 30 to maybe 40 miles so i hope that this review has been thorough and told you everything you need to know about the rambler thanks for watching guys give me a thumbs up drop a comment catch you next time